This past weekend was a great weekend of sports for EKU Athletics. Softball opens, wins three out of four up in Chicago. Back here in Richmond, the men and women sweep Moorhead State. And on the women's side, Madison Wood is the only senior on Senior Day. Quite a way to kind of honor uh, your last year at EKU. Big win for the team. It was great. Uh, we all played super hard. We had a lot of hard practices coming into that game, so we were ready. We'd been preparing all week for Moorhead. Knowing that they're the third team in the conference was tough knowing that, but we just don't really think about that when it comes down to game time. You had 5.6 rebounds, played a season high 32 minutes. The thing for you is you had a, a weight room accident and broke your foot, so you missed um, double figure games and you've only been back for the last eight. So I would assume still trying to round back into basketball shape. Oh yeah, it took me a couple weeks to get going again. Uh, even jumping with my jump shot and stuff, I'm still not where I want to be, but I just have to compensate for my accident in the weight room. It was my fault, so I kind of have to put that on myself. We talk about you being a senior, the lone senior, and, and freshman Bria Bass had a big game. She had 18.17 uh, rebounds. Abby Wright had 15 points, a junior. So we're getting contributions from the young players and from veterans like you and Abby. They're all... All the girls that have come in have so much potential. And to see Bria be able to be a stellar player at this level is great. Uh, she did have that, she, she puts up those numbers almost every game, it seems like. You always see she's in double digits here or there. So as a freshman, to be able to do that is, is great. Everybody knows about uh, the giant in the room when it comes to women's basketball, UConn. They've won like 94 straight games in their conference. But behind them, Belmont and the OVC, your next opponent, has won 39 straight games against OVC competition. And for the first time ever, ranked in the AP Top 25 of all teams at 24. So Thursday will be quite a challenge. It will be. Uh, last time we played them at home, we were only down by six at halftime, so knowing that we can stay with them, and they are ranked 24th in the country, knowing that we can stay with them is is nice because you know we're, we're sticking with them. We can play against teams like that, but we just have to be able to finish against them Thursday night. We have to be able to come out third quarter after halftime, fourth quarter, stay strong, and be able to rebound and defend. So. And you're in a, in a dogfight to, to make the OVC tournament. Eight teams make it. You're currently tied with Murray State, who you would lose a head-to-head -head tiebreaker against. Southeast Missouri looming a game ahead of you. You still play them. So you know that these last four games of the season are extremely important of whether you extend your season to Evansville. Yeah, very important. I just talked with Coach Cole, our assistant coach, and we were talking about, oh, who wins this, who wins that. But we're just thinking about, we what we want to do we can't depend on what other people if they're going to lose or win so we just have to come out and play hard these last four games from waterloo iowa getting your degree in public relations so what's next for madison wood after college and basketball is over i am going back to iowa that's where home is so i'll look for a job there and try to make some money What's it meant to be an EKU athlete for you you come from you know iowa and end up in kentucky uh, what have these two years meant to you a lot, it's been really important for me. The journey that I've had here in Richmond to come from like a junior college and transfer to a division one university like EKU and the conference that we play in, the OVC, super athletic conference, you know. So it's been, it's been a grind, you know, academically of course, but athletically it's been, it's been a grind, but it's been fun. I've learned so much from everybody. Been fun to watch you, Madison. Congratulations on Senior Day. Good luck the rest of the year. Thank you very much. That's Madison Wood, a senior basketball player, the only senior on the EKU women's team. Also, congratulations to Nick Mayo for the second time this year, OVC Player of the Week, as he led the Curdles to that win over Moorhead State as well. And don't forget, the men and women are on the road this week to Nashville for two games. On Thursday, the women will tip off at 6, the men at 8, and then on Saturday, 6.30, women's tip against Tennessee State and the men will play at about 845. We'll have the men's action at 100.7 and on the TuneIn app with your phone and the women's broadcast at 92.5 FM and 1340 AM. It's batter up next. The baseball season about ready to get underway and we'll talk with the head coach Edwin Thompson when Inside EKU Sports continues. At EKU, you'll learn to take a broader view of your world. 
but we also understand it's the details that shape the big picture. So go ahead, play with fire, think on your feet, or touch the sky. Here, you'll be a part of something new, something big, something beautiful. Be a Colonel. Your time is now. Sometimes you gotta close your eyes and breathe. Find a way to float away on an ocean breeze. Where the sand is a dance floor beneath your feet. Let go and unwind. On Myrtle Beach time. It's time for the baseball season to begin, and third-year head coach Edwin Thompson joins us. And you begin with three in Wilmington, North Carolina, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, looking forward to it. Obviously, year three, we're excited about the, the group that we put together and kind of hopefully have better balance than we had in the last couple of years. But obviously, I've got a tough schedule to start off. Wilmington's one of the top 40 teams in the country. Uh, Lehigh and Butler both had great years last year, Butler being in the Big East and had a good year. So it's going to be a lot of fun just to go play somebody different. That's the biggest thing at this point in time of year. Let's talk about your uh, fielding hitting lineup first. Six of your nine are back, of course. Uh, Co-OVC Player of the Year, Ben Fisher, a local kid, ha has graduated. But uh, you have a lot of returners in your lineup. We do. You know, it's going to start with, uh, with Danny McFarland. I think he's a uh, key to our team this year, uh, center fielder, three-year starter. Um, he's had a great last two years, and we're looking forward to him kind of leading the team, kind of been there. Uh, Preseason all-conference, Alex Holderback is back as well. He's a three-year, it'll be a three-year starter. Um, he'll, he'll be catching as well. Um, so we got Ryland Kerr back at shortstop. Um, we know we have... Um, Nick Howie played right field. So we have a good options. Um, the returners that had some experience, which is exciting. We had some new guys as well. You have six pitchers back, and your uh, signing class, your new guys are eight junior college players, seven freshmen. And I know you told me that you hope to have more depth in your pitching as we go through this long baseball season. Yeah, that's the key, the pitching depth. I think uh, ultimately when you go through the league and conference play, Having enough depth to get through a weekend, not have to use as so many less guys. The more guys you have, the better. They'll have better options. I think uh, it just the key is just our quality of our depth. I think our guys have gotten better. I think at the end of the day, Coach Revelette done a great job with our pitchers this offseason to help our pitchers get better. And ultimately, that's what we want. We have some young freshmen that turned to sophomores, some sophomores into juniors, and now we have some seniors as well that have that we have developed since they've been here. But then also we brought some junior college players in to kind of help us um, a, a little bit uh, that, uh, from our, to address our needs. You had a, a good home record. 20 and 11 the road is where you struggled so you've started tough with a lot of road games and after the three down in North Carolina you play U of L who's one of the best in the country and then three at Virginia before you get home yeah I, you know I think any time you know you have to look each year what, where, what your strengths what your limitations were and we wanted it to be better on the road if we were better at the road we'd be a postseason team last year and I think that's ultimately our goal is to get to back to postseason uh, for our conference but ultimately just become a better program and to do that we want to win at home and on the road and I think uh, playing a tough scheduling that's always going to be important early to kind of see where you're at but playing Louisville um, and then Virginia two top 15 teams in the country uh, which is going to be always always fun we'll play UK down the road and as well as Vanderbilt so we'll have uh, some pretty pretty good competition but uh, I think it's going to benefit us in the long run. And out at Earl Combs Stadium, uh, the first game will be on February 28th against Bowling Green State. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the weather <laughs> shines on us that day. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we had such a great fan support last year with the new stadium and everyone coming in. Um, so thankful for our fans and our support. We, our atmosphere was one of the best in our conference, and it really was, and it gave us that edge to have 20 wins. And I think that's obviously, we have 24 home games trying to get that back again. The grind of the OVC, you have these three-game weekend series. Uh, what, what's the key to competing in the OVC and, and making that postseason tournament and then seeing where things land? Well, you know, the key is just trying to, uh, to be balanced. I think in the last couple of years, we've been one-sided. We've been very offensive, and uh, that's okay. Our league's offensive, but we have to have improved our defense really this offseason, more athletic in our, our team um, base running, and then our pitching has improved. So we want to be more balanced in, the, in those three areas. But it, uh, it's every weekend's a challenge, and everyone's weekend's a, it's a real fight, and, and it's just got to hopefully have a challenge to uh, be where we want to be at the end in the OVC tournament. 
Okay, Edwin, good luck this season on the Diamond. Thank you. That's Edwin Thompson, head coach of the baseball team. They begin with a Friday game against the host of this round-robin tournament. It's UNC Wilmington. And then the Colonels on Saturday will take on Lehigh and then Butler on Sunday again, February 28th, the first home game. And when we come back, we're going to get another look at a spring sport. That's women's golf. But first, see how one EKU student is soaring into his future. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day, the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Hit high and deep. Back of the end zone. Brown got it. Moore drives inside. Put it up. See this one. Swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place. Anytime. Find it here. The OBC Digital Network. It is my pleasure and privilege now to introduce the student speaker for the College of Business and Technology, Horace Hunter. When I was approached about being the commencement speaker, uh, I was really humbled. Uh, I didn't think in a million years that I would be under consideration for such an honor. I fell in love with aviation when I was five years old, uh, when my mom brought me to Japan. I never really met my grandma at all because she's half a world away. The plane ride over there was fascinating to me, how something so large could leave the ground and then go so fast and we could end up on the other side of the world. In the aviation industry, we pilots have a saying, no two landings are the same. My first time uh, stepping into the cockpit of an airplane, it was a really surreal experience. Time moved in slow motion because of all of the things that I was taking in, the smells, the sights, the sounds, and it's just a experience that uh, I'll never forget no matter uh, what kind of airplane I fly, how many hours I fly it, and how many years you know, I'm down the line. Horace is highly regarded by faculty and students alike. We think a lot of Horace. He is very selfless. Uh, he's a hard worker. He's a good time manager. He is very helpful. He's a great flight instructor, very patient with students. He's a good ambassador for aviation. This became apparent when he completed his flight certificates and ratings faster than any other student in EKU aviation history. EKU definitely prepares you and gives you all the assets that you need in order to succeed. We're the only university-based flight program in Kentucky. So our students walk away with a bachelor's degree, and it also puts them on a pathway to get in the cockpit of a regional airline a little quicker than they would otherwise. We have professors that flew presidents in the past, professors that have worked in the corporate and business aviation side, and we have professors that have worked in the airlines. So we have a really deep pool of intelligence and experience to share with the students. You, being the pilot of your own life, made a decision to land here at EKU. Coming out of uh, EKU, I have multiple career opportunities and that's something that I'm very blessed and very grateful for because that's not a luxury that all uh, college grads can say that they have. As for the future, well, the sky is the limit. I'll be going to uh, PSA Airlines, which is a subsidiary of American Airlines, and flying um, regional jets uh, and working my way up through the seniority list to eventually become a major airline pilot. This is living the dream. That doesn't mean that it's easy, though. Being a flight student here in our program it requires a lot of dedication. The students spend a lot of time on the road out here to the airport. Horace Hunter Jr. To see them get through and succeed and get their flight qualifications and graduate, it's extremely extreme. I feel like a parent for every one of them when they walk across the stage. Being able to fly thousands of feet above your campus every day and just kind of glare down at it, uh, there's something really rewarding and you know, you're having fun up there as you're, you know, as you're teaching, as you're flying. Here at EKU, You'll get the competitive edge if you treat every landing like a new one. Just like that, that's there. Everything about the aviation community, I, I just love it and I know I will uh, for long to come. Good job, Brian. Thank you. Right on. So with that, I would like to wish you all the best of luck in round one of the game of life. 
We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Believe it or not, it's time for the women's golf season to begin and the EKU women begin at the Amelia Island Collegiate next Monday and Tuesday. Mike Whitson is with us, eighth year as head coach of the women's golf program. And you've got a team uh, of juniors, sophomores and freshmen that will compete in the OVC coming in second last year. And you've won three of the last five titles. Yeah, yeah, we've had we've had a few good years, obviously, uh, under our belt now, but uh, um, we have a young team this year. Uh, we've had a lot of fun so far this year. We had a really good fall season. And uh, this team is definitely looking forward to getting in the van and traveling on Friday down to Florida to compete next Monday, Tuesday for the first time this spring. Elsa Moberly is your leader. She had the two lowest rounds of anybody in the OVC in the fall part of the season and had the second best stroke average. She's a nice leader, uh, a Kentuckian that came back after starting her career at Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elsa's uh, improving every day, um, really is, is a highly ranked player. Uh, on Golf Stat, Golf Week, and in some other different rankings around the country um, due to her fall season where she finished a fifth at the Mercedes-Benz, uh, one of the most prestigious events in the country. And then we went to Colorado and she finished second in the Golf Week Invitational out there and just got uh, nipped out there at the end by a player from Arizona. Um, so Elsa's, um, her fall speaks for itself and, and, and speaks for itself in her ranking this going into the spring. After this first tournament, you'll go back to Jacksonville, Florida. You also go to Pinehurst, North Carolina, one of the cradles of golf in America, and also uh, just south of Atlanta. Then come home for the, the Colonel Classic. I think it's the last couple of days of March. Uh, so what do you look to get out of all these tournaments leading up to the mid-April OVC tournament? Well, the first tournament is, is sort of the strangest tournament in that we go and we know we're not quite 100% sharp yet. We've been able to get out and um, – and work on some things, but uh, not, not work on everything we want to work on just yet. So it's a good time to get to Florida, get some work in while we're competing. Uh, after that, we really expect to sharpen up some. Um, and I, I think we'll have good finishes all, all spring, uh, but looking for improvement uh, every, every tournament out, uh, especially with the young team and enjoying that part of it too. They're enjoying uh, just trying to get better every time out, and I am too. And then um, obviously it ends with the OVC tournament, or hopefully doesn't end with the OVC tournament, but uh, it's gonna be a battle there uh, in Muscle Shoals this year. You mentioned Elsa, or I mentioned Elsa, and you talked about her. Who, who else on your team should we look out for this year? Well, uh, every, I'm so pleased with where everybody is right now. Amanda Lindahl really played well uh, in, the, in the fall for us and comes back after winter. She really worked hard in Sweden over Christmas break and uh, looks really sharp going into the first tournament. Hannah Beth Owens made wonderful strides for us in the fall um, and won a tournament, won our last event down at Mercer, her first collegiate win, so really proud of her. Um, Sam Sandlin did some really quality work out in Phoenix over Christmas where she's from. Um, Raga Christens uh, comes in. Um, I won't even try to pronounce her entire last name. I was Sometimes waiting I can't for it. it. She's so. from Iceland. <laughs> so, um, she's, she's continuing to work on her game and learning the ins and outs of college golf. And then Michaela Houck uh, from Wisconsin. She, she, is, um, she came in this fall really a changed player. Worked hard over the summer to change some things. And uh, a lot of credit to her for that. And Kaylee Boyer is really looking to get her feet wet this, this spring. She redshirted last year. Didn't get a chance to get in the lineup in the fall. But uh, I think she's looking forward to, to getting a chance this spring. Okay, like I always tell you, have them hit them straight and put them in. We'll do the best we can. All right, thanks, Mike. Mike Whitson is the women's golf coach. Again, the season beginning Monday and Tuesday down on that Florida 
and Georgia border. And there is a lot of golf between now and the end of the season for the EKU women. And that will do it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. You can follow EKU Athletics wherever you are by liking and following our channels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. And as always, go Big E.